previously on the Trogly's Guitar Show. Why is this thing $9,000? Even I can't explain this one. My friends, a scandal has happened. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. It's time for a weekly mod collection demo shop update. However, something bizarre happened. Somewhere around June 19th, I think the Gibson website got hacked, there was some sort of a glitch, there might have been a rogue employee, but that 70s Explorer that was $9,000 got dropped down to 2000 Like, oh my goodness, that was such a steal and a deal of a lifetime. I only wish I could have saw Robert's email in time to get that to document him. But you might be saying, hey, Trogly, why are you saying they were hacked or there's a rogue employee? That's probably just a price correction on something that was incorrect to begin with. And you'd be correct in saying that, but look at the prices of everything else. That 70s Explorer in Ebony got updated to $8,000. The Regal Plum got jacked up to $5,400. The SG Special Cherry, which I actually kind of liked, increased to $3,799. And then a Les Paul Tribute Gold Top, you know the things that only cost a little over a thousand bucks? All the way up to reissue pricing at $6,500. Were they subsidizing the price of Calypso Glimmer here across all these different models? I have no idea. Absolutely no clue. But what I can tell you is when it came time to update the site this week, all those guitars disappeared. <laughs> we thought Gibson had their website fixed, but now I, I just have no clue. And yes, it is confirmed that somebody actually got this guitar because they messaged me on Reverb about it. Lucky guy. But anyway, scandal aside, there were actually some pretty darn cool models this time. And yes, the site was working properly. However, to start things off, we've got another one of these just completely out of touch price points. $8,000 for a 70s Flying V. Once again, Gibson USA product, but you know, it's been customized, but we've seen things like this that were well under half that price before. There has to be something going on, but they call this one Lowrider Orange. Kind of cool that we've got the see-through pick guard so you can actually see all the design you can see our now orange control plate and your wire lines here and it is a pretty fascinating finish i mean that is like marty bell style super flake finish and they even did it for the matching headstock so the only thing i have against this one is the the price that is just makes no sense 2500 all the way up to 8000 Next, we have Claret Emulsion. This thing's pretty sweet. I think if it was a righty, it would have sold a lot faster. There was another custom they did at one point in time. I think it had a molten name last time, but it looks like we have like a reddish border that transitions into black, but it might have a little bit of gold in there. Kind of reminds me of the Galaxy ones that they did previously. But then you look on the back and it's like, okay, they've got the interesting reverse burst continuing here. So completely black in these areas. They almost went a little bit too wide on that as far as traditional teardrop shapes go but I really like that neck on that that is sweet kind of reminds me of leopard print at the same time but that would be perfect for a lefty who always feels left out not being able to get cool limited editions but surprisingly they left the headstock alone I didn't think that was too bad of a price 5400 Next, we had a double pick guard ES335. This time though, instead of being a left-handed guitar they did this to, it's a righty. And it looks like we've got one of the piece switch tips on this one. Maybe not my favorite in the world, but the black tuner tips really ties everything together. There was a Les Paul Studio in wine red. Pretty much the only thing that really changed here besides our hardware and the plastic knobs is the pickup covers. Looks like they had more of that red tortoiseshell style material that they placed over top of it. They did up a 60 standard in deep cocoa. If you want something that's unique but not too unique, this is like that perfect culmination of things. Works particularly well with a plain top. Nice dark brown finish, witch hat knobs replaced, black hardware. They must have been trying to use that stuff up this week and uncovered black pickups. It appears to have been a complete refin, and hey, sweet custom shop case with that one for some reason. So not a bad price for a custom color. There was a Thunderbird base. Not too much interesting about that one, except for it got the high performance truss rod cover on it. And then check this thing out. You guys remember the half burst? Where it was half gold top, half burst? They did it again in a different way. They called this one the Summer Lagoon. Once again, this one was done as a service to the lefties. So it's got 40% blue. 40% kind of lime green, and you got your other 20% of somewhere in between. Certainly not a traditional look, or one that I think they'll bring into production anytime soon, but it's got a vibe, it's got a vibe. I really like this blue side, that works perfect with the flame quilt going on right here. Sadly, they did not do the back though, but that's all right. Here we have another fruit-influenced one with metallic pear. But this thing, at 4700 
has got to be one of my favorite SGs that they've made in a while. So A, being the anniversary version of it, makes it a little bit more desirable in the future because people like anniversary models. But we've got all gold hardware now, when this originally would have shipped with like a nickel. Still has the ABR1 bridge, you've got your Maestro Vibrola, they swapped out our knobs for the amber ones, which work really well with this green finish. The pull pieceless pickups give it an interesting vibe. It looks like they left our headstock alone and they did indeed do a complete refinish. But here's where things get interesting. This is another take on that, hey, this was originally an aniline dyed red cherry guitar where we can't necessarily get all the red out of it. So you can still see the, some of the red underneath this green finish, but I think they finally found a color that works well with that red staining underneath it. Then we had a 59 reissue in satin finish. Kind of confused why they're not giving you much of a discount. It looks like they did the whole radiator grill style P94 pickups in it. Looks like this SG Standard also had P94 pickups in it this week, as well as some fancy Grover Imperial tips on the Grover tuners. But this thing was really sweet. I love this. 70s Flying V. Okay, remember, this is the same thing that they're trying to charge $8,000 on that other one. This one for a little under $3,000. Granted, still a premium over a stock original one, brand new. But this thing's cool. It's called Completely Chrome. So you've got a chrome finish. You've got no pole pieces exposed. You've got a chrome style pick guard. You've got clear knobs. This is a sweet little flying V. It kind of reminds me of the modern flying V done up in silver prism. Or like the Roswell Rhodes guitar that you can check out the review and demo right here. It was a complete refin, including a chromed out truss rod cover and a matching headstock. And then check this 339 out, done up in graphite metallic finish, which you can check out a Les Paul Custom done up in a similar finish. However, this one appears to be a really, really, really dark take on that. But then you flop it over to the back and it's like, oh, it's like the exact same thing that they did for the tuna steak burst a couple of months back with just a sunburst in the middle of the neck and then the rest of the dark finish. However, it looks like this is graphite metallic yet, but then this is just black. So you kind of have an interesting mix between the darker finishes. This SG Modern had a similar take as those other pickups we were looking at earlier, but this works so much better. A, it's a brighter color, so it shines through, but it matches these knobs. It kind of matches the switch tip they put on here, but that's a cool evil looking guitar. And then the last one from this update is a 60 standard in Unburst. Not much to say about it, except for Perloid Pickguard. Cool top, matching toppers on our pickups. So what an interesting week for the mod collection. I guess keep an eye like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, maybe a weird price correction on stuff will happen again and you can score a great deal. Hard to say, hard to say. Let's switch gears here to the Gibson Demo Shop. Lots of players grade stuff this week, but a few cool custom colors. And we'll start things off with those. This is a Les Paul Classic done in what they called Hunter Green. Now to me, I call this fake pit bad refin job. <laughs> It looks like it was meant to be one of those Sweetwater exclusive ocean water green Les Paul classics, but then they got like a whole bunch of dust or something in the finish. Now I'm sure that was intentional. It's probably like some sort of a sparkle flake and these photos just don't do it justice. But what's going on here? It's such a strange pick guard. The only thing I could think of is maybe they ordered a small batch of these style of pick guards for a model that was just going to be like a master volume right here. That way you could do your volume swells a little bit easier and then it didn't end up happening. It's either that or somebody just took a little router and made themselves an interesting nose pick guard. Like you could put a little smiley face right here. This is just a big nose and that's his eye. Now kind of abstract art going on here. But other than that, yeah, I think the green finish is quite nice, but look at the back on that. That is a nice back. And then to follow that up, we had Brick Fade. I mean, I appreciate they're giving things custom colors, right? But this one, not for me. It is just a little bit too boring. I mean, they just left the back alone and gave it a solid red color up here. That was quite a premium they wanted for that too. They also had one of the AMS exclusive Flying V tribute style guitars. And then this, we had another custom color 60th anniversary SG Custom. Now you gotta remember, these were like $6,700 brand new. So to be able to get one for that much money off in the custom finishes that were done up for a few exclusive dealers towards the end, this was fine. I mean, it was lightly aged. So I mean, they didn't even have to say it was demo. It looks like this was maybe unintentional checking? I don't know. I mean, it's age. So, I mean, what, what do you really care? But then you go over here to one that's currently available for 6,200. Let me tell you guys, these were hard to sell for dealers. I think I had two of them, but I ended up having to discount them around like the, I think it was around the $5,000 range just to get a first quality one to sell. SG Customs, they don't quite have very good resale value up to a certain point anyways. 
So I was kind of surprised to see one of these priced that high when you could have got a custom color Murphy Labs aged one for much cheaper. We've been seeing a lot of these Flying V customs within the shop, but what made this one special is the fact that it was a pretty early one from the early reissue period of this. That puppy's been sitting around for five years. But this thing right here, if I refresh the page and it's not sold, I'm going to be disappointed. There we go. Good. I'm not disappointed. What a fantastic deal. A, it's got this interesting, unique blister top. Like, it's some bird's eye. It's got the whole plain toppedness going on. It's not traditionally beautiful wood grain, but it's nice. It's so good. It's one of the traditional pros, so I think you'll probably actually have some fancy electronics within here with the push-pull pot system. They were initially a Guitar Center exclusive, but I think they were like 2400 something around there. So that, a Les Paul traditional. 1500 bucks. That is probably the best deal this entire week for just a great player's guitar. The 60 standard had kind of an interesting quilty flame top. Cool Les Paul custom style pickguard really transforming the look of this one with the black plastics. I wanted to share it with you because it's like, how does that happen? It's like really long impression line. But to be fair, 1899 scream and deal it seems the demo shop is starting to get a little bit more aggressive on their pricing rather than hold on to things for a while because let's face it a lot of the stuff has been sitting and not selling as fast and then lastly within the usa demo shop that was interesting there was a 57 standard custom shop that had the oxblood finish so this is you know kind of jeff beck vibes except for without the rat tail piece and stuff kind of expensive for a 57 reissue i'm pretty sure that's how much they are brand new but hey you can't always get that finish right away. And now we'll take a quick gander at the European demo shop. Just a bunch of players grade stuff, but there were a few standout deals. Such as this. A little over a thousand bucks, including value added tax and shipping. Les Paul Studio Dark. I mean, it has the grade over Gibson logo, which is kind of cool. Rich light fretboard with black binding around the neck. So that's actually really special that a studio has binding in general. Chromed out hardware. Can't go wrong with that for a thousand bucks, especially in that market. Similar story on this SG Standard, I mean, 1100 not bad for that. 50s Tribute for 850 I mean, like, you just can't go wrong. Sometimes there are some screaming deals on here. But I fell in love with this. Remember that 1500 traditional we were talking about a minute ago? This gives me similar vibes. Look at this wood grain. It's so whimsical. I love it. It's just out there over the top ultra wavy it's got its own thing going on it's got a tight streak right here and then it gets a little bit wavier again it screams character that's a guitar i would want to own i mean when you flip it to the back i mean it's not one of the flame neck versions that you occasionally see but i could see that selling for like 1200 bucks on the used market and over there you can get it for 950 including everything similar story on this 50 standard 1900 not bad and lastly, a 335 Studio in the Ginger Burst. We used to see a lot of these in the US demo shop. Kind of an interesting color for a 335. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this week's recap. Some interesting tales and interestingly modified guitars with some deals. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care.